the industry that we're studying. Um, having experts from the field come and speak to us and share their expertise. And then the work that you do uh, in groups as on, on your final project. All of that is how you get information. It's really interesting. Um, learning and educate, learning and teaching are two different things. In the old days, it was the teacher's job to basically open your head and pour stuff in it. Now, it was the teacher's job to just put out facts and figures and boring, boring, boring. What shifted is it's now the learner's job to take the information and make it valuable. It's your job to do that. It's not, and that's an interesting shift. And you see this in corporations. Corporations used to put a lot of money in training people. Now what they do is they expect people to learn on their own. I have a hashtag that I use sometimes called hashtag always be learning. And I really believe in that. Always be learning. Always be learning something new. So part of our uh, education is to invite uh, speakers. And how many people looked at Kevin's um, LinkedIn page and other uh, information that we sent out? OK, so I'll say it again. It is a courtesy, a business <coughs> courtesy today to do research on people who are going to be speaking to you or people that you are going to meet. That is expected. It's not spying on somebody. It's an expected <laughs> activity that you know something about them before they come. So Kevin is a, an amazing communicator. He's an amazing educator. He teaches at San Diego State University uh, in the entrepreneur program. He has a company, he's written books, he's an amazing guy, and he is going to talk today about personal branding, his version of personal branding, and how important it is in both the industry, the marketing and branding industry, as well as to you as an individual. So without further ado, let's welcome Kevin. Yay. Yay. How you guys doing today? All right, so get ready. We're gonna have a little fun today. Okay, a couple things. Uh, I shut my phone off, please shut your phone off, right? A couple less distractions for our day. Uh, we are live streaming this, so uh, if you're really, really interested in the content later, you can go back later. I'll make the slides available. Um, but this is a chance for us to engage with one another. Uh, I never like to be just the boring speaker guy that's up here and you just kind of like hang out there and check your email once in a while and somebody did something on Facebook or you got a Snapchat somebody. Let's put all that stuff out. I'll put my stuff away if you put your stuff away. Is that fair? Okay. So uh, I want to have some fun today talking about creating you. Okay. This is creating you the rock star's guide to personal branding. Okay. Uh, so how many people get what personal branding is? Okay, They're that means, starting the, to. That means the rest of you have no idea what I'm talking about, right? So this is a chance for you to get answers, because I already know uh, what this is, and I'm really good at this game. So I came here to tell you what I know and to help you with personal branding, which may be very different uh, uh, um, than what you have experienced in the past. Okay, who thinks they have a personal brand? Okay, it's not a trick question, right? So how many people, right, of your friends, right, when, when you go out and you're with your friends and you see something, you're like, oh, that looks so somebody, and you put somebody's name in. Who, who does that when they go out, right? So why do you do that? Because there's something, something about that reminds you of somebody, right? Like, oh, that looks like something she would wear, or that looks like it's something something is triggered a positive memory, usually a positive memory. Sometimes it's like, look like who that is, you know, and then there's a negative memory, which is different. Um, but um, we want to talk about those positive memories and the things that people associate with you. Oh, come on in, there's still around there. Yeah. Um, that, uh, so that as you build your personal brand, as you build your career, there is some uh, bit of recall, right? Wouldn't it be great if uh, when somebody saw something awesome, if they thought of you? Who would like that? Like, I see something awesome, I think of you. Exactly. Thank you for playing my game in the back, right? Uh, 
So that's what a lot of personal branding is. That is like getting people to think good things about you for a purpose, right? It's not just a popularity class, right? We uh, we all went through the like the, the popular cool kids maybe in high school. We had to deal with like the popular kids in high school. You guys, and nobody had to deal with any popular kids. So I'll say, so here, here's the, the, the big open thing. I was not a popular kid in high school. There I said it, okay? And it sucked because you're like, wow, it really would be nice to be one of the popular kids, but I wasn't. Right? And there was a certain game that went around with being the popular kid. And I didn't want to play the game, so I wasn't one of the popular kids in high school. But I learned the game. Okay? And uh, who's had to play, you know, who, who knows what I'm talking about when I'm talking about these games of popularity? Right? Come on, that's right. Don't be bashful. Thank you for coming to class. Now, the rest, next three questions will be yours because you're late. <laughs> there you are, Wait, right? Everybody got a coffee in? Right? Who's my coffee? With Keep everything good in here. A much better caffeine, right? So this this whole game, right, of popularity. Um, just when you think that you, you survived high school and you didn't have to deal with it again, you got to college and you got to play all over again. But it's a brand new game, right? And then you got to go to college and you got to tell people, oh, well, I'm this person now, and, I'm, and you change your hair and you do different things, and now you reinvent yourself. How many how many people reinvented themselves when they went to college? Me too. Right, college worked out for me much better than high school worked out for me. Right, so then you get through four or five or six years, however long do you take to get to college? I'm not judging here. I was on the five-year plan, right? And then you grad, and then you want to get a job, right? Who, who's looking for a job? Right, always be looking for a better job. Um, so, so that's a whole other new game, right? Now it's a whole other popularity contest to go get a job, right? Because who are the people looking to hire? And it's not just the most popular people. Who gets hired? This is where you answer my questions. I mean, it depends on uh, the industry. It could be like uh, the most efficient people, like judging on their performance and everything. Yeah. Or it could be like a like, ability, like a person that you know, matches uh, like other people in the company. Or uh, uh, oh, someone just like fell in love. I mean, in terms of during the interview and right so so yes some of it you have to have the skills and abilities what other things how, how does another work with when uh, when you get a job right so one of the things that you have to learn is people like to work with people they like right there's a reason you got hired right there's a reason is it's uh, you have a skill set that I don't have that's a very common reason why someone's gonna get hired right I, I can't do this job I need to hire somebody you could do the job uh, that's one of the things. The other thing is um, people like to work with people they like, right? Who, so even if somebody had the skill set, thank you for playing nodding a lot here, so I'm now going to pick on you. So even though you, you found somebody that had the skill set and they were really great at them, but you didn't like them, would you hire them for the job? Not really. No, not really. And that's how it works. This is all real life stuff. People have to like you, right? But what do they have to know? What do they have to know in order to figure out what they like about you or not. Start a conversation. I'm sorry? Start a conversation. Start yes. Start a conversation. Right. So so there's a lot of different things that they have to know. They have to know your education. They want to know your background. Right? They're like, what did you do before this job? Right? Do you like puppies? I don't know. Sometimes puppies come up. Right? <laughs> but, but there's there's personal things. So there's business data. Right? I need to know that people want to know about you. There's personal data that they want to know about you, even though they can't ask for everything. And all these different types of things go into people realizing who you are. Right? So uh, I'm here to tell you that it's, uh, that it's not as hard as it was in high school, because you're much smarter and uh, you have a lot more experience. But business, it's tricky. And a lot of that stuff that we learned in high school and in college, it works in business today, but you can leverage it to your advantage, right? And that's what you do to create a, uh, uh, to start creating a personal brand, right? So one of the things, get great pictures, right? Who's afraid of the camera? Who thinks that, who thinks that they, you, can, you can never get a good picture of yourself? All right, so you need to find a better photographer. Right, because the, one of the first things that I learned was that great pictures go a long way. Right, so I have a great photographer. Her name is Cece Cantone. She's in San Diego, and Cece's my buddy, and she, you know, and uh, I look like I'm having fun. Right. Yes. Right. So and uh, so this is what people want from me for my brand. Right. So people want to, you know, no one wants to like hire the speaker that's like, 
Oh, I'm sure he's very informational. I'm sure I will. No, man, people want to have fun, right? They want to learn and they want to have fun, right? Now, if, you, if, if every day you got to go to a job where you could learn and have fun, would you go to that job? Yes, right? If you went to a job where like the guy was a jerk and you didn't learn anything, do you want to go to that job? No, right? So, so that's a lot of what I have to create in my company and that I have to create for my clients, right? But you have to figure out who you want to be, right? So you have to, you have to work on creating me, right? So this is one of your first assignments, right? I teach uh, creativity and innovation at San Diego State. And one of the things that we looked at this semester was uh, what's called a creative profile. And it's really kind of looking in the mirror and figuring out who you really are. Right? And this is all the like nobody's around and your friends aren't here. And this is a little like you really have to get introspective and figure out who you are and what you want to be. Right? So, I need to your so this is where you are today, right? Today. Today. You're in school. Who wants to go to school for forever? Me. You really? Yeah, I don't know forever. For, it gets a lot. I've been in school 11, 12 years. It gets tired of one, right? And then eventually you want to have an awesome job, right? Awesome job is over here. Now, who can tell me how, you, how you're going to get from here to here? And that's what this personal brand does. Right? You have to you have to worry about creating you. Because who wants an awesome job? Right? Unless that awesome job that pays a lot of money. Right? So we'll cover this in dollar signs, right? Or yen or anything else that whatever your currency to it. Awesome job, money. Right? And how about a little bit of power? You can be in charge. Does that sound great too? Yeah. All right, power. Let's put power in. This is getting awesome. Okay. So how are you? Going to get from being in school to where you have an awesome job where you make a ton of money and you have some power. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here, exactly, right? So, so one of the things that you can do today is start figuring out who you want to be, who you have to be to get there. Because I'll tell you um, that it usually takes more steps than you think that it does to get there, right? So, who wants me to map out their future and how they get to the where they want to be? Raise your hand. You're the first one you win. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I'll have an awesome job, uh, maybe run my own company in Brazil. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what industry would that be in? Mm, could be the hotel yeah. industry. Which uh, one? The hotels. Uh huh. Hotel? Yeah. Uh huh. Which one is? Okay. So you could be uh, like a, what, like a part owner in a boutique hotel? Yeah, I could be that. Okay. There you go. So how are you going to get from this classroom? To be a part-time, a, a part owner in a boutique hotel in Brazil. Networking. Huh? Networking. Networking will start, right? So that's one of the things. Thank you. Right. So networking. Let's put that in here, right? So there's going to be some things, right? You got to meet people. You got to have job, some jobs, and this is plural because you never just goes to like write the president. Like I graduate and I got to meet president. Usually it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Although in my company I did. Like uh, I just came up with president right away. And I'm like, yeah, it's my company, I can make what I want. Right? So you need to have jobs, and then you need to have experience, and then you need to have an opportunity. Right? So this is the short version of what you have to do. So to get to networking, right? Who has a business card? Right? If you have a business card, take your business card out, please, pass it forward. They don't know. Well, so he has showed up to meet new people and you don't have a business card. I'm giving out some less than good grades today. Right? So always have a business card with you. Always have plenty of business cards with you. Why? And by the way, business card when you don't have a job these days, you can get cards made with your name, with how to contact you, an email, and a way something to exchange. So you can do that today. Yes. So I have an awesome business card. Does anybody have all the cards here today? Anybody? Nobody has a card here. They're not working. All right. Wait, we got one in the back. We got somebody who showed up. All right, here you go. Pass that forward. All right. So here, I made, I brought cards for everybody, right? And just pass these around. Make sure everybody gets one, please. And there we go. Congratulations for being prepared for life. 
<laughs> All right, because you just never know who you're going to meet, right? Sadat. Sadat? Yes. Kevin, very nice to meet you. Right. So, Sadat, I'm going to walk my car back here since you're kind of sitting here. If you will, this is my plastic see through super awesome business card, much like the one you see on the screen. These things cost me $1.85 a piece to make. Now, why God's name when I put a dollar eighty-five into each business card? Memorable. Memorable, right? Why else? You want people to keep it. I want people to keep it. Who's going to throw away a cool business card? Most people will not, right? And I got some funny stories that I can't tell you about people keeping my card and what they did with it, <laughs> right? But right. So, so I introduce myself, right? Which I should probably do a, a little bit of a background. Right, I, I introduce myself where I create expectation for the people that I'm meeting. So very quickly, my background, which you can read uh, at much greater lengths on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Kevin Popovich. I'm the founder and creative director uh, for communications director for Idea House. Um, my company for 25 years has helped businesses figure out what to say and how to say it to their target markets. We do communications planning, creative development, and account management for business to business, business to consumer, and nonprofit com companies across the United States. Sounds kind of snazzy, huh? Yeah, I've been working on that for a while. Right? Um, again, I'm creating expectation now. Right? I tell you I do all these awesome things. If I tell you that my undergraduate is in communications and psychology, if my master's is in multimedia technologies, my doctoral studies have been uh, in instructional technologies, and uh, I'm working on publishing my second book. Actually, being published, thank you very much. All right, there is a difference, right? So now I've created even more expectation, right? So now how can I come up with all that and give you a crappy business card, right? I can't, right? If you have this big disconnect where you're like, oh my God, he does all these things, and he has a little paper card that does this. No, not slamming your part card at any rate, but this is why I have a very cool plastic business card that is very memorable. Right? I've created this expectation and I need to fulfill on my brand promise, which I'm sure that you've addressed at some point today. Okay, So that's why I invest $1.85 a card, because the things I'm selling are in excess of, of $100,000 a year. So I put $1.85 into making a good impression on somebody for the first time I meet them, because they may give me $100,000. That's a smart investment. Right? So, but I know when I show up to my networking, I am prepared. Okay? So when you show up from your networking, you should be prepared. Right? So on your assignment for the next 14 days, make a business card. You need to have something to give to people. In, in American culture, it's a thing. Right? It's the same thing as you know, like having a website or like a Twitter handle, right? If you don't have one, people, like someone's gonna give you a card and you're gonna stand there like, hey, thanks for the card. It's not how this works. And then it'd be like, and then you know, I'll let you give me my card, right? That's an exchange in information that starts your networking. Without that, you're just, you're just another person who took one of this guy's cards. Make sense? Okay, so who promises me to have a business card within the next 14 days? <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. All right, so if you want feedback on your design, please feel free to, uh, to give that. So um, back to this creating me. So I've shaped what I wanted to be, and I have become all those things. That's what you need to be able to do in order to create you. So who knows what they want to be when they grow up? Well, we are. Are you? <laughs> okay, right? Who, who has no idea what they want to do with their career yet? That's okay. Who's somewhere in between? What about the rest of you who didn't raise your hands? <laughs> right? What do you what's your challenge? How can I help you today? Keep going and we'll all right. We'll, we'll blend all right. Everything. So <laughs> as much as you want to create you and you can create, you can be anything that you want to be, right? The one thing I will caution you is just be authentic. You must be the person that you tell people that you are. Why is this important? How many people like love a fake person? Nobody likes a fake person. What happens when you find out that somebody you thought was cool it was a fake person? Right, and you want nothing to do with that person. 
right? Eventually, people figure all of this stuff out eventually, right? So it's uh, I'm all about somebody being able to change their stars and to grow and to advance and to be what you want to be, right? That's one of the greatest things about uh, what I think is, a, is about this country. You can be whatever you want. You just got to show up and do the work, right? It's not all smoke and mirrors, okay? Now, on the other side, humility never made me any money. Get this? Humility never made me any money, right? Being the nice, quiet guy at the back of the line, you know, that's not like, hey, let's take the nice, quiet guy from the back of the line and give him a giant opportunity with a really big check. Does that, is that how this works? No. no, right? You have to be known. You have to be seen, right? And you have to put yourself out there. How many people consider themselves bashful or quiet? Who's a quiet person here, right? So who's the loudest guy? When you go out with your friends, who's the loudest person with your friends? Yes, right? You have a distinct advantage. You tend to be noticed in a crowd, don't you? That's good for you. Just make sure you get noticed for the right things. Right, like I've had people that I've had friends that were uh, they were the life of the party, but they were also the ones that usually were being escorted by the police somewhere off the property at, at some point. Right, so there's a balance of that. Right, so you need to be able, you need to be visible. What's one of the ways that you can become more visible, even where you are? LinkedIn. Who's got a LinkedIn profile? Who doesn't have a LinkedIn profile? Your homework is to create a LinkedIn profile. A lot of homework tonight, Beth. Okay. Guys, um, LinkedIn profile is, um, so this is how this works. Networking. So who's currently networking? Right. So uh, here, play my game with me, please. So when you go to network, how does this work? You go to where to network? I go to maybe a bar, a coffee shop, mm -hmm. uh, a party. Okay. Wherever. Okay, wherever, right? Uh, yeah, a fire, a meeting, a business meeting. Okay. Yeah. So when you get to the, let's go to the, like the bar. Yeah. Right? Just never know who you may meet at the bar. Okay. How did, uh, give me an overview of how the, the network, how do you network currently? Uh, how do I network? So you show up at the bar, there's some people you know, there's some people you don't know. Okay. Right? How, how does it go down with the people that you don't know? I think the best way is find out someone who knows, you know, and then try to let them to introduce you. Yeah. Uh, if not, try to notice some uh, interest or something they will be interested in and then try to start a small talk conversation mm -hmm. based on that. Right. So a lot of how that will go down is you'll get introduced by a friend. Hey, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so. And usually your friend says, and this is something for you guys to start talking about. And this is where that business card comes out really handy. You're like, hey, nice to meet you. Here's my card. So that's how it goes in. So you make some nice talk and you find you have something in common. What happens after this conversation? If everything goes great, right, what happens next? I'll probably set up a follow-up email saying that uh, it was very nice meeting you at blah, 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 and then uh, uh, like to talk to you again, maybe have a coffee together, uh, doing something together in the future. Right. So, uh, so that person uh, gets your email, and then they have a decision to make, right? So. So some of the uh, our, our people in the back here. So what do you do to decide whether you're going to have that meeting with that person or not? It's business. You're a very business, busy business person, right? And you can't meet with everybody. So how do you go about qualifying whether you're going to meet with this person or not? Sounds like Google. Right? You Google them, right? You go check people out, especially on business. Right, so the first thing I do is I go to LinkedIn, if I meet a Burton, and I want to see who this person really is, right? Because I'm from the East Coast, right? So on the West Coast, everybody got a story, right? On the East Coast, we don't believe anybody, right? So we go to check them out. You go check them out on LinkedIn, you go check them out on Facebook, you want to go check them in on Google, whatever. You just want to see is this person really who they say they are, right? And this is where LinkedIn profile is very helpful. Right, that business card is going to tell them where to go. Here's my site. Here's my Twitter handle. Go find me on LinkedIn. Right, the, the title that I have on LinkedIn is going to match my uh, my profile. And there's some credibility there. Right, what other things can you do for credibility? Because at this point on this networking, you just need people to make sure that they connect. Right, you need to get them that next step. Right, you found this guy. He's interesting. You want to set up a meeting. You need the guy to say yes. What do you do about that? 
right? You have to have enough equity in your personal brand for them to check you out and say, yeah, I want to meet with this guy. And that gets you to your next step, right? That networking is going to move you into an opportunity for a job. Makes sense, right? Bro. Right. So as you go through this, you've got to manage perception, right? You've got to be what you want to be, right? Now, this is a picture. One of, this is one of the pictures that I throw out there because I want my target market, my audience, to perceive me in a certain way, right? I'm not sitting, you know, I'm not sitting with like 20 cats, like stroking my cat. That's not how I want to be perceived, right? Nothing against cats. I'm a dog guy, but like for me and my brand, you know, I want to be doing rock star stuff, man. I want to be like on the top of a building or on a jet or climbing down a mountain or something awesome. Right? That's my brand. You got to figure out what your brand is and how this all makes sense. Right? So you can manage perception. Right? So don't put pictures out there that contradicts who you are and how you want to be perceived. Right? Especially if you're in business and, you know, and, you, and you're trying to build uh, a sense of credibility and trust uh, and professionalism. You can't have pictures of like you doing keggers with like a bunch of your friends. You anybody know what a kegger is? Right, it's a big barrel of beer where you do a handstand and somebody pours beer in your mouth, you got your feet are up in the air and stuff. You can't do stuff like that, right? Guys can't, you know, you, guys, you can't be doing dumb stuff and, and expect to be taken seriously. Ladies, you cannot uh, present yourself in any way less than professional, right, and expect to be perceived as a professional. Um, I know that there's a, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different standards, and there's a lot of different rules. And it depends on cultures and, and a lot of different other things. But it's up to you to manage the perception of yourself in front of all of the people that matter, right? So there's some stuff that you uh, that you do with your friends that you wouldn't do in front of your parents, right? Yeah. Right. Same thing like distance, right? I got the same thing. Although my mom's gotten used to most of my stuff by now, so I don't have to owe it as much, right? So next thing is you have to be relevant, right? In that networking. In order for you to get an opportunity to job, you have to be talking to that guy. You have to be in the same business. The guy's going to say, hey, I'm in software. And you're going to say, hey, I, I'm in software. And he's like, really? What do you do? Oh, I do app development. Oh, really? We're looking for guys from app development. That's how this works. You have to be relevant, right? How many people are doing something today that makes them relevant in the job that you want to have in the future? What are you doing? I'm doing sales in the IT industry now. I would like to do the marketing in the IT industry in the future. Mm -hmm. In back? Uh, I'm meeting with a, another music producer. Mm -hmm. brought up my music. Yeah. Okay. And those are the types of things that you need to do on a regular basis, right? Be relevant. And uh, there's the, you know, the one challenge is a lot of times people think that they're relevant and, and they're not, right? Um, and that's a tough. Uh, that's sometimes very tough to decide. Um, I, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I want to explain this that it makes a little more sense. Right? In public relations, everybody, uh, you know how, the, how public relations with, works with the media, right? The media covers a bunch of stories, right? You ever watch the local news and they cover some story and you're like, why would they ever cover this dumb story? Mm. Right? Like we get a lot of stuff for like, you know, uh, the sewer broke or something. I'm sorry? The sewer broke. The sewer broke. Like, yeah, so I live in Del Mar. They're talking about the sewer broke in Escondido. Why do I care? That is irrelevant to me, right? Um, so, but the way that a lot of times that the media works is they have to just fill stuff up, right? So, a lot of it is just being at the right place at the right time um, or, uh, or there's an opportunity, right? So, you have to be relevant, but you also have to be real, right? So this is a picture of me in my studio the day that I found out that my book was in the San Diego State Bookstore and that I was going to be and it was going to be used for a class. This was the very first time. So this is one of my Facebook page pictures, and I'm like, and I, it was a, it was a moment for me as an author, which I was like, hey, I'm kind of excited. My book is here, right? This is a very real thing. There's not a bunch of hype, you know. I got my stage shirt on. I'm in my studio. Got my book. Right? And you have to be ready in, um, uh, for those opportunities that come in, but you have to be real. Right? So there's a difference about the smoke and mirrors, what I call shameless marketing, which you present yourself as a light, you know, in the light, and it's rock star, and you know all this stuff, and you do all these things, and that's great. But this is a very real moment for me uh, that was kind of a big deal. 
right? So for, for me, and I share that out in the in this context. So there's a difference between this picture and me with my sunglasses and being, you know, whatever I'm gonna be, right? You have to be able to balance those things because nobody wants the guy that's on all the time, right? That stuff's fun, but this is real. And, it, and people can perceive the difference. So you have to use the right tool at the right job. Another thing is it's not just about you, although I'm in there. This is one of my classes. Uh, I was teaching social media strategy in this class, and there's 45 French MBAs studying abroad. Um, so uh, we have a lot of fun with this class, and, and uh, as much as I'm trying to put myself in the light as speaker author, I want to put you know other people in there with me, right? So it just can't be the you show, right? It's about other people too, and that's where you start throwing this up to create. Uh, 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 you're able to demonstrate experiences as your next step in this, right? Because you want to create more opportunities. Right? Now, there's a lot of other things that you can do. Um, I've done some fun things like this. Like I, I, I created a, a web show for a client, right? I have a uh, quick story about experience, right? So I always wanted to add like a TV show. Any guys ever want to be like the lead singer of a rock band when they were like a kid? And if nobody wanted to be in a band when you were a kid. You got a music guy in the back. You got to do something. I, I, I'm always interested in electronic music. Maybe that's why. All right. So, so one of the things that you know that you know that I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be in a band, right? So I, I did a short stint in a band in college, right? And then I'm like, oh, I want to be on a TV show. Well, I couldn't get the TV gig, so we created this web show for one of my clients. He sells T-shirts, and uh, my client is goes to Comic Con. Any, any Comic Con fans? No, but here you go. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so my guy sells T-shirts at Comic Con. So we had a video crew, and uh, we were at the Anaheim Comic Con. And uh, on that Friday, there when they're setting up, they have all the celebrities that are going to go sign stuff in addition to the um, the T-shirts and the everybody else that's going to be there. So uh, we had this video crew there, and uh, we see somebody that used to be on Baywatch. Right, we go over, do a quick interview with this girl, throw it up, and put some pictures of Baywatch T-shirts, and we sold a bunch of Baywatch T-shirts. So I go to my client, I'm like, "Hey, we should do this web series, and you know, you're, you're at these co the conventions already, and you know, you have access to all these celebrities. We should do a show." And he goes, "Great, you should host it." And I'm like, "What?" You know, uh, so uh, unbeknownst to me, I got I created this show that I ended up doing like 160 episodes of, called I Am Styling. Um, so I kept my point about this is that you tell people that you want to do stuff, prove it. Pick up the mic and go do it. You know, you want to be in music. You want to be in music. Go and do it. You want to be in sales. Go and do it. You want to be whatever you're going to do. Pick up the mic and go and do it. Right. But you need those experiences to create those opportunities that you want. And not all these, not all the opportunities are going to be perfect. But you, if you pick the right ones and they reflect on you positively as the brand you're trying to build. This stuff works great, right? So for a year and a half, I flew all over the country being like the, like the interview guy with like all these people used to be in like all the TV shows and like movies and stuff that we used to watch as kids. And it was a blast, right? And I had like this awesome t-shirt collection because we had to wear a different t-shirt these things, right? So there's a lot of different things. So no, it wasn't on TV, right? But it, but it was on, uh, but it was fun and it looked kind of like a show and I got what I needed out of it. It contributed to my personal brand, okay? Now, all these different things are going to affect what we call points of influence, right? To make all that magic happen over there, right? You have to figure out what will you come in contact with the people you need to affect to create these opportunities that you want. Where do these people exist? Like, where are you trying to get to? Where do you want to be? And who do you need to get in touch with for your awesome job to happen? Actually, um, we have a private business back in Egypt, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm taking the course and I'm studying here because I want to be back and um, to expand our business. Mm -hmm. um, our business is very competitive in Egypt. We are manufacturers of fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. and we export and we have, of course, our local market. So that's why um, I want to have like I always feel like. Um, tiny, you know what I mean? I'm like trying to convince the customers to buy our product, mm -hmm. even in our food exhibitions in New York, in Dubai, in, uh, in France, and in Germany. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to convince the people like to buy the product because it's, it's very competitive. Yeah. And you have to have like the knowledge and experience. And so, 
So if all of a sudden uh, Gordon Ramsay, you know Gordon Ramsay, the crazy guy from Hell's Kitchen, the, the one that screams at people, if all of a sudden he came out and says he, that they should buy your your products, would that be great for you? Okay. So, so, great. so we need to figure out how do we get Gordon Ramsay to say, you know, out of all the fruits and vegetables you can get, these are the ones you have to get. Right? So, so, so that's kind of the game. Right, so you have to figure out. So you may not get Gordon Ramsay, so, but like, who's the next awesome person? And who's the right? So there's a bit of a food chain. You have like A players, B players, C, D, you know, etc. So you have to figure out for each of your brands, right? Who do you have to get to, and what do you need them to believe about you to create those new opportunities, right? And sometimes it's you know it'll be a friend that introduces you to bar. Sometimes it's going to be that guy knows a guy who knows another guy. Sometimes there's going to be a girl who was at this event with your girlfriend. You never know where you're going to be, where you're going to meet somebody. And that's why I, I always keep two business cards in my pocket wherever I go, right? You know, and I expect to come home with zero when they're done. I always try to meet a couple more people when I'm going out, even if it's just like for drinks. You, you know, you just never know where people are going to come from, and that's now and that's later. Right, so in sales, um, in sales a lot of times uh, will categorize people as referrals, influencers, and decision makers. Okay, referrals are people like I can't help you, but I know somebody. Influencers will be well, I don't sign the contract, but I work for him, and I'll tell him that they should buy your fruits and vegetables. Right, and then the decision maker is I'm, you know, I'm the guy with all the power. I make all the decisions. Right, so you're not going to get to decision makers all the times. But you never know where those referrals are going to come through or, or who ends up being an influencer in an opportunity that can impact your, your position, right? And all those people, that network helps support you in becoming your brand, okay? Now, you have to understand that it's about perspective. This is not about you. It's how are you, you are perceived by that audience. So I'm sure we are all awesome and we all need to do the right thing, but sometimes we're not perceived as awesome or as awesome as we want to be. Uh, and uh, we may not per be perceived as having enough experience yet um, that, that uh, provides that opportunity for us. So personal branding and, and the packaging, how we present ourselves, how we speak, the articles uh, and the posts and things that we like, the people that we're friends with, the people that um, we, we've connected with on LinkedIn, um, all those different types of things cumulatively goes to creating your brand perception of who you are, right? And all of this uh, is within your control. But it's imperative that you realize that it's not about you looking in the mirror. It's about people looking at you and saying, I believe who you are. I trust you with this opportunity. I'm going to make this introduction to this person, and I really hope you don't mess this up because I'm putting my name out there for you, right? So you need to be cognizant of all these different little things, um, but it's, it, it goes through how you are being perceived by these people on whether they're going to do these things for you, because you can't do it by yourself. I tried, tried, you can't do it by yourself, okay? Now, you gotta remember that you gotta share the love, right? You got a little time in the spotlight, there's usually some other people there with you, right? And people like to play with people they like. So this was at a conference that I did um, uh, down in San Diego, and I got my buddy Craig photobombing me in the back, right? Is this a fun picture? Do I look like I'm having fun? Yes. yes. Do the other people look like they're having fun? Yes. yes. So this is perfect stuff for my brand, right? I got my little Google glasses kind of snuck in there kind of subtly, but like a little tech, but not too much tech. Uh, I'm having some fun, and everybody else is having fun. This is my brand, right? Uh, I, am, uh, I am knowledgeable. I am approachable. Um, I love to have discussions about communications and technology, and, and I'm out. You know, people know. You know, in my my circles, people tend to know me, right? And that's good for me. It creates more opportunities for me. That's what I'm trying to get to. Um, but by doing it with these other people, right? Like, for instance, in this particular photo, I tagged the the, the other three of them, right? So I got in her network. I got in his network. I got I'm already in his network, but I got I got a lot of love off his network. Right? Because they knew me already. So these are the types of things um, where social media, content marketing, well, it's very advantageous for your brand. Right? To be seen with other successful people or decision makers at other, at other large companies. 
that can only be good for you. There's no downside of that. Okay? Any questions so far? All right. So now, no apologies, man. I hate the game not to play. I didn't make this game up, but I should did learn how to play it really well. Right? So, um, if, if anybody see the commercial with uh, on Progressive uh, with Flo talking about, you know, Flo and Progressive? Right, we'll skip over that. But anyway, yeah. so the line is sparkles, right? Sparkles are for winners. Did you guys interested? Okay. If you could search for Progressive, sparkles are for winners, and it's a really cute little 30 second commercial. But I give out smiley face sparkle stickers for people who do great at my workshops. Doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> so who would like to have a smiley face sparkle sticker today? Because I take these damn things everywhere. I'm not kidding you. See, here you go. The webcam. Just this so, <laughs> so why do I why do I give these things? Why do I bring these to these events? It's fun. It's fun. That's it. I'm about having fun, man. Right, on fun of sharing the love, right? I let people who are very participatory pick out the color of your very own sparkle sticker. That's how much love I got. All right? So, yeah, watch out. Yeah, watch out for this. So, this is the kind of stuff I do, right? So, it's the stuff that I do. It's some stuff that you may not necessarily be comfortable with for whatever reason. Um, and, it, and it's a lot of things that early on I wasn't comfortable with. You know, in high school, I wasn't very comfortable in getting up in front of the stage uh, or speaking to large groups of people. Um, my uh, my grandmother used to always teach us to run to our, our adversity, right? So in college, I became a DJ. So I was the quiet guy who wasn't uncomfortable on stage, and then I created a job where I was the one on stage and everybody was looking at me. So, you get over pretty quick, especially when the music's really loud and everybody's having fun. You know, you don't get as nervous. You're like, hey, great song. And you're like, hey, thank you. You know, you feel better about yourself and you build your confidence over time, right? So whatever it's going to take for you to uh, get over any um, fears or inhibitions or hesitancy, right? You got to show up for something good to happen, right? Let me tell you, this is how the game is played here. And if you want to be successful, you got to play the game. Right? It's not like Santa Claus is going to come up in like August. Right? Santa Claus doesn't show up in August. Right? Santa Claus comes around once a year if you're lucky, if you're good. Right? But you can't wait once a year for something good to happen to you. Right? So you have to make something good to happen. To you. you have to take ownership of your personal brand and you've got to say, hey, this is the game. i got to figure out how bad do I want to win or at least be able to, to participate in the game for this all to happen. Right? So you feel free to like borrow. I'll tell you where I can get where you can get sparkle stickers, or you can get like kitty stickers, or you can get a whatever. I'll tell you where to get business cards, uh, your LinkedIn profile, um, all of these different little things that add up to start making you use. Right? Uh, if you send me a link to your LinkedIn profile after you think you have it figured out, I will tell you what I think of your LinkedIn profile. Is that fair? Right now, why am I so generous? You only get more connections. Yes, that's a, that is a byproduct of it. I can only get more connections, which builds my audience. Right. So uh, the other reason is because uh, as an educator, I know that about only ten percent of you will actually do it. So out of our class, that's a small number that I actually have to do. I wish that 100% of you would do it, but I've been doing this long enough that I know that only some of you are going to act on this, right? Some of you, some of you others will, will never do any of this. Some of you will do some of it, and a small number of you will do all of it, right? It's that small number who are going to do all this stuff that I'm very interested in supporting, right? So you can do something, I can do something to help you, but I already have my LinkedIn profile. I already have this pretty much figured out how I want to be. We're trying to help you to figure out what who you are and what your brand is going to be. Okay. Questions? We got to have some questions. All right. Yes. Well, he has a question. Yeah. Well, we talked about like personal branding, and it's, I think there's like a good line between like actually providing misleading information. And like you know, talking really good about yourself, you know, like it's right. some things and everything. And in terms of like social, I mean marketing and it's like personal branding, I think it's a big deal. I mean you mentioned that like nobody wants like to see 
egg process. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you see this like bloodline? Because I mean, it's, it's like fresh experience for me because I saw a person like that, and it's, it was really disappointing for me mm -hmm. on many levels. And yes. And that, that person, she's like famous for her like personal branding and everything. She's like, how do you speak about it? It's, yeah, it, it is a it is a gray area, uh, and it, it, it and sometimes it's difficult to make the right decisions. Um, I can tell you that the the I can usually tell you the ones that were the worst decisions for me to make. Those ones become very obvious. Um, as a general rule, though, I think you have to. Um, one of the lines that we we use in our creative department is that you have to be able to tell uh, tell people which of your kids is ugly. Okay, and you know what I mean. Anybody have kids here? No. Okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just checking. Right. So, <laughs> so it's very it's very difficult sometimes for a parent, right? A parent loves all the kids, right? All my kids are beautiful. All my kids are smart, right? But if you really got into it, right? You, you know, someone will tell you, okay, so this one's better looking than my other, right? And you have to get to some um, some uh, some honesty, right? So when you want to share something about yourself, right, and you think is relevant to your brand. You have to you have to start thinking about who cares, right? Who besides my mother who loves me, you know, cares, right? And you have to be able to answer that very uh, accurately, right? So for professionals, for instance, I'm shit. So I'm working on my second book. I share that out. Who cares? Well, my mom cares because she's my mom. Uh, but my colleagues care. Uh, like Ben has been a, 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 a dear colleague and a contributor for years. Our friend Rodney, he cares that I'm doing the book. Right, so there, so I've got an inner circle that cares during the development process. I have another circle that cares when the book comes out because they're friends and colleagues, and people usually wish you well. Of, hey, that's great, you made a book, you know that kind of stuff. Um, and now I'm hoping that after that, the media will care. But you have to pick the right audience at the right time, or they don't care, right? And another thing I'll I'll, I'll stress that is my grandfather used to always tell my dad, "Tell me after you did it." Right? How many people see has friends that they're always like, "Oh, I'm gonna do this. Oh, I'm gonna do that," but they never do it. Anybody have friends like that? Right? And you start recognizing that that's who those people are. Like, "Oh, they're gonna do this." And like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." He says he's gonna do stuff all the time. Right? That's so, his brand. Yeah. That becomes your brand. <laughs> that's a different question. For instance, like, I don't know if somebody says, "Like, I went to Harvard," not specifying this, like, it was actually an executive program. It was only one month. And it was like uh, no actual, like you know, no education requirements, no degree, and like some uh, uh, certificate. And it's like I went to Harvard. I mean, not actually lying, <laughs> but like everybody else just is as like, oh, I don't have this special degree or probably some credit degree. Oh, for instance, there's like some TV show, and the host is like, oh, that's the best public speaker in the world, meet him. And then you put on your biography. Like yeah, yeah. TV channel named me the best public speaker in the United States. like you know top job coach yeah. or whatever, and it's it's actually misleading because for many people it's like it's some official reward or whatever. But I mean you put it in some like you know misleading way. Yeah. So there's you're asking a really good question. You know there's a difference between bragging about stuff and exaggerating and being authentic. Kevin talked about mm -hmm. being authentic and being real and trust and credibility, which has to be part of that, you know? So I think that it's a, it's a really good point. Um, not everybody is gonna need or want an out front personal brand in your career, business career. We talk about it in the context of branding and marketing because lately it comes up all the time. And in job search and in networking, people talk about the term personal brand. So we're speaking about it. Um, not everybody's going to go to the level that Kevin goes. This is his business, though. He should be this way because he sells this product. He sells the product of communication and the ability to do media and stuff. I don't, my personal brand is very understated, you know, it's just what's out there about me. I don't spend a lot of time talking about it. So, um, it, 
I don't know if that helps, but uh, the, uh, the exaggeration part of it is a tendency, a, a human condition. People just tend to exaggerate. It's up to us to uh, look into it. If you're in a job situation, they will find out if it's real or not, right? Because everything can be checked in. So, um, yeah, you know, the reality. Uh, I'll, I'll comment on that on too, because people, that's why I said on that one slide, that people find out. Right, so I, I've seen, uh, I've had colleagues that have done the same thing, right? That they say, oh, I went to Harvard, and then it turned out it was like some two-week certificate program, which is very insulting to my friends who really did go to Harvard, right? Um, and or they could say, I went for a certificate program, and then you could you say, oh, okay, good, because people do do that kind of stuff. But as long as you represent it accurately up front, right? Yeah, yeah, right? because I'm a big friend. Anybody, if you know with the, the term smoke and mirrors, yeah, right? So it uh, tends to be at, to do with like magic and illusion, right? So uh, there's a difference between packaging and illusion. I think you, I think you should be packaged well, right? You should have um, all of the uh, uh, accessories and, and the trimmings of a professional in your space. People expect that. Those are the compulsories, right? If you, no matter whatever your industry is, you should be able to profile and say, all right, who is, you know, to this job, right? If I want to be awesome, have an awesome job, make a ton of money, and, and be in a position of power, right? What did those people have that got them there, right? What type of networks did they have? What types of jobs did they have? What types of experiences did they have uh, to create these opportunities for you, right? You, so if you start with that profile, that starts giving you a roadmap of, well, they started here, and then they did this, and then they did this, and then they did this. Right? Mirror those people who you want to model yourself after. Try to find somebody who you think does a good job of presenting themselves and then mimic and learn from that. Also pay attention to the ones that don't do a good job. Like the, the example that you made. I'm sure that you would probably, based on your reaction to this, this the way the person presented, you would never present yourself in that way. Right? Yeah. So there is just as much to learn from the good people as there are from the bad people. You know, I, I worked with a, uh, for a guy for a number of years who didn't treat uh, a lot of people very well when he owned the company. So when I, and he didn't pay people as well as he could have, and he didn't respect them very well. So I learned from that when I've had my company now for 25 years that I've always tried to pay people well, I've always respected them, and I wanted to try and create opportunities for them. So I, I wanted to be everything opposite from this guy who I didn't like. Right? And that can be a great motivator sometimes. But you have to figure out how you're going to present yourself. Now, this is my LinkedIn profile. Again, my snappy picture. Right? But I've got here, again, the, the proof. Right? Because there's one thing you just can't state it. But I had a, a guy that um, used to be a writer for me, John Lally, a dear friend of mine that passed away. Uh, John said, don't state, demonstrate. Okay? Don't state, demonstrate. Right, so there's one thing about having a, a line item on your resume or your LinkedIn profile says that I did something. That's great, but it's better if you could show them that you did it. Right? So that's what I try to do with here. Right? I've got different posts that I've done, that I've written. Here's a little in my background on me. Right? Here's more videos that I did for my book and pieces from my book. Here's uh, the first book. There's two journal articles that I published. Um, now here's another one is the skills and endorsements on LinkedIn. Anybody not ever see this before? So I can explain what it is. So a recommendation is one thing, right? You are on LinkedIn. Um, just like any other recommendation, some, some place that you worked. Hey, so-and-so worked for me. She did a great job. She was reliable. I would hire her again. That carries a lot of credibility when you go to your next job, right? Right? So on LinkedIn, they have these endorsements, right? And these are the people that uh, who are my connections or your connections and says, yep, KP knows what he's talking about, right? So when it comes to marketing communications, creative direction, marketing, right? They say 99, I think this is actually like 429. So I've got like 5,700 connections on LinkedIn, right? And these only go up to 99, but like social media marketing, I think this is at 429 and whatnot. Um, so these are important because when people come to check me out after I meet my guy in a bar, and he comes to check it out and I said, hey, listen, up. I know stuff about social media, and you come here and all my stuff is social, 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 he was this, blah, 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 blah. This is all the credibility and proof. Now, do you think that I have to, when I meet with this guy, do I have to go and sell this guy on do I know social media? 
no, man, he's going to come check me out. I'm like, I'm walking on water and curing cancer here. Right? I'm doing really good. Right? So this is what you want to do. Now, all of what I've done, because I've packaged myself and I've branded myself, that those are two conversations I can skip over, and now I can get the opportunity. I don't have to sell myself. When, you know, when I, because I've packaged myself and I've communicated who I am, and all I've got, and all these other people said, "Yep, he knows this. Yep, he knows this." I'm a safe bet. You know, it's not like you know there are 13 people and like three of them are your family. And it says, "Oh no, they're really good at that. They trust us." You know, that's a big. And you can remember when people are going to hide the, to offer opportunities to you. Is it a risk? Yes. Yes, it's a risk, right? They may know you, they may like you, but what are they saying? They're telling their their boss, "Hey, you should hire him. He seems like I checked him out. I, I met with him. He seems like he's a good guy. Uh, it looks like he's got the skill set. We should hire this guy, right? That's a big deal. Now, what happens if you're horrible at your job? I just told my, I told my boss they should hire you, and you're horrible. What happens? I'm going to look for a new job. Yeah, right? So that's a big deal, right? So you have to give people that proof that you're talking about, right? I know this, founder, experience, 54 recommendations, people telling me that I'm awesome, right? Thank you, 54 people. <laughs> we right? agree. You're right? awesome. Blah, blah, blah. You know, so it goes, you know, instructor at, at social media strategy, customer engagement, uh, San Diego State, San Diego State, blah, 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 blah. I get tired of looking at this. The point is, uh, is that I've done all the work that I have to develop my personal brand and these are the things that have contributed towards my personal brand over time. You just can't show up one day and say, okay, ready to be awesome. I posted everything and now I'm awesome. No, this is stuff that's going to be over time that's going to lead you down this path, right? So that's what we're here today, trying to figure out what you need to do to start networking. Do your networking to create opportunities for jobs, get, to get you more experience, they present you that chance so that you can have an awesome job, make a ton of money, and be in power and control. Fun. Right? Other questions for Kevin? Well, this was very enlightening. Kevin, thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you. We're going to take an early break so you have a chance to network with Kevin for a couple minutes. You can stick around for a couple minutes, Kevin. I can stay okay, around. So we'll come back in about at about 25 after, and then we'll uh, continue on. Okay. Good question. There you go. Good. Okay. Good. okay. Thank you, Kevin. You're most welcome, my friend. Always good. And here, you, can, you get to have a sparkle sticker. Oh, so. I want a sparkle sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes, you too. A sparkle sticker. Balance in the you know, like personal, there's like you know, mountain pictures, and it's like some you know, professional information. How much faith? It is it is part of that. It, it's a mixture. Let me just shut this off. Stop.